Hey guys, it's Chris here, back again, this time with a movie review. This video was taken bits and pieces of. This is a Batman v Superman, Donna Justice review, the next episode, the Zack Snyder's Justice League, and also a little bit of the Justice League or the Justice League of 2017. This is just going to be like the shortened version. If you guys want the longer version where we give more thoughts, you know, we talk about the reviews of whenever this video or movie came out and all that. We also have some trivia on there, so some really exciting things. We go into more in depth of some of the other things we even have some of our favorite lines our favorite scenes a little bit of that is on this video however if you guys want the full experience definitely check out it on the podcast basically wherever you find out your podcast link of all that will be in the description down below click on our website of the fireside thank you to fireside for that so basically get to your desired platform from there or you can just listen to it from the site either way leave a like onto this video and also comment down below what you guys want me to review and also what you guys think about the movie review formats please let me know if you guys really enjoy it, it's a little bit easier for me just to do this type of stuff. Recording and editing is not fun, however, it's a little bit easier to actually do it on this. And also, if you're new here or to Hern Visitor, hit that subscribe button. Also, check out the podcast and also hit that notify bell. It really helps out this channel and it lets you guys be notified whenever a new video comes out. If nothing else, let's get into it. <laughs> Alright, so, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, was released on 2016, March 25th, and it stars Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, and is starring as Bruce Wayne. Gal Gadot as the beautiful, but deluctuous Wonder Woman. Amy Adams as Lois Lane. Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Or, for Jesse's instance, uh, the Riddler. Which we'll get to. He's more, yeah. We'll get that in my thoughts, yeah. Jeremy Irons Jeremy is the Irons. absolute best, best Alfred. Absolute best Alfred of all time. And also Holly Hunter as Senator Finch. Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White, Jesse's favorite character of all time. And Diana Lane as Martha Kent, if I'm not mistaken. For you guys that are actually wondering, what is BVS about? What is it? What is it? It's, it's not the VBS movie that... Just not Dawn of Justification. It's the Dawn of Justice, aka the Justice League. The B is Batman. Chris's favorite person in the movie universe. Batman. Batman. The moon. V means versus. Wow. Yes. And um, then the we'll H actually get to Superman. the reason of the V um, within the um, more later in the podcast. Just, just because it's actually a very very important V. They're not just doing it as a, like a shortened type of verses. I mean, they kind of are, but they're kind of not. But the V is very, very important, as we'll get to. Um, kind of like the X with PXH. Yes, okay. exactly. Just a little bit. With you guys wondering, what's so important about Batman v Superman, other than the characters, the title, and all that type of fun stuff? One, it's a sequel to Man of Steel, plot for Batman v Superman, is it's been nearly two years since Superman's Colossal Battle with Zod. Superman, played by Henry Cavill. Zod, played by Michael Shannon. If you guys did not watch Man of Steel, watch that episode. For those that are watching on the YouTube and also listen to the podcast. Devastated the city of Metropolis. You know that big um, nice, uh, action battle scene that you know <laughs> you guys saw. The loss of life and collateral damage left many feeling angry and Helpless, including crime fighting the billionaire Bruce Wayne, like we said, played by Batman Affleck. Convinced that Superman is now a threat to humanity, Batman embarks on a personal vendetta to end his reign on Earth while the convincing Lex Luthor, played by Jesse Eisenberg. However, Jesse thinks that Jesse Eisenberg is actually really playing the convincing Riddler. Yes, he's Launches. just all over the place. He's very crazy. But we'll get to that. Stop stealing my bits. Launches his own crusade against the man of steel. Bomb, 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 bomb. All right, so Jesse. Yes. What are your thoughts whenever you first watched this movie back in 2016? 
So it was very confused. I was very confused. Okay. Um, the theatrical version that we ended up with was very rushed. There's a lot of action sequences and events detailed that you did not get originally that we get in the Ultimate Edition that came out on I DVD have to, 4K. I have, to, I have to stop you right there. Uh-oh. What do you mean by theatrical edition? Are you saying that there's more than one edition? There's more than one edition. What? It's just, for whatever reason, Zack Snyder likes having these different versions of his movies. Huh. It's either A, the studio likes messing with his version, or B, <laughs> he just likes having a longer movie. You guys decide. Yes, yes. Both of you guys decide. I don't know. Even you, Jesse, you decide. You decide right here, right now, on this podcast of what his choice is. Right now. I'm putting you on the spot. What is it? Is it studio or is it Zack Snyder's? There seems to be a lot of studio interference in his movies, though, bro. Well, there's a lot of studio interference in all of his movies. Is he the only exception? Hmm? 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 No, but it seems to be like mega with him. <laughs> over and over and over. I guess. You know what? We'll get to a little bit. We went from a four-hour movie and the next movie we're going to discuss to like a two-hour movie that was nothing. With awful reshoots. Oh, oh definitely. Gosh. Do you guys stick in tune with the next episode where it's just like, yeah, maybe a little bit of the studio interference with this rather than the um, uh, Zack Snyder's vision, you know, wanting to make it super long? The theatrical version that I saw really did a good job explaining why I should be rooting for Batman or Superman in the fight. I just, they were both just creeps, oh. kind of. I felt like, and then, oh, okay, here's the beautiful Wonder Woman, and she's just a side character. Didn't you really explain why she's there in the first place? There's just a lot thrown at you and not enough details. Okay. Originally, originally, since I've gone back and rewatched, totally different feeling. Chris, why do yes. you feel the way you feel about the movie? You know what, my first thoughts about the movie, uh, whenever I watched it in theaters in 2016, was uh well one yeah these are like my t- two favorite characters well one i like i love batman as no um, i i didn't realize this I, well, this is we, we've known each other over a year and this is how you tell me on the podcast jesse there's other people that don't know me as well that may not realize that my favorite character is batman even though they can they can clearly see on these later videos of the youtube channel which you guys on the youtube channel are clearly watching and for those that are uh, listen to this on the podcast. Yes, we're doing this simultaneously. Why? Because we can. <laughs> and because two, Chris hates himself and doesn't like his free time. Uh, gee, the, that's actually very accurate. <laughs> 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 um, but we also have the amazing portrayal of Superman. Also, uh, so yeah, so Ryan I of of the Batman, which I'm a huge fan of, and also Superman which I was a very huge fan of within Man of Steel. Like, he even looks more like Superman in this than he way did in Man of Steel. He looked way more buff. The suit was cleaner. They actually did detail the suit just a little bit more. They made it just a little bit better, a little bit more detailed. Added a little bit more color, as yes. we discussed with Zack Snyder. A lot of people's complaints about Snyder are his lack of colors. With the DCEU and the Snyderverse, each movie added more color. Yeah, they, they kept on um, adding a little bit more color, a little bit more color here, a little bit more color there. I enjoy that. You know, it's just, it's it's nice to see a little bit more, a little bit more here and there. The more that you got a little bit more color, the more that you got more into Zack Snyderisms. I didn't leave the theater thinking that this is going to be the greatest movie of all time, which it's Batman and Superman. It should have been the greatest movie of all time, or at least the greatest comic book movie of all time. As more that I've watched it and the more I've actually watched the Ultimate Edition, I've enjoyed that so much more. Um, there are some actually really problems with the Ultimate Edition, it, though it is a better cut than the theatrical version. There's some things that both do really good, and then there's some things where both do really bad. What this do in the box office? Because that's kind of important back in uh, this time. It's actually very, very interesting. Very interesting time frame, uh, Chris. Let's talk about that real fast. So in this came out in March. Later on in 2016, in May, Captain America Civil War would come out. Mm-hmm. Same general themes done by Marvel instead with Captain America versus Iron Man mm-hmm. without being referenced to really in the title. This movie wanted to go head to head and beat that. So originally, this was going to be released in May as well. They yeah. pushed it ahead to come out in March. Well, the, actually, the original release date was supposed to be July um, mm-hmm. of 2015. 
Uh -huh. But then they moved it to May 2016 uh, in order to give the filmmakers time to, you know, truly encompass this, this envision and what the movie's really have going about so that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, complex visual nature of the story, da, 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 all the fun stuff that, you know, you always hear all, all about. The, you know, they have the exact say, it's like, oh yeah, no, this was just a better time to um, uh, have a better window release, even though that's like corporate stuff, right? It's just like, no, you guys just don't want to go against Marvel. We get it. You guys, we get it. It would have been actually honestly really cool but it would have also hurt both movies. Exactly. Neither movie would have ended up on top. I think it would have burned fans out quicker, possibly. Yeah, it would have. Uh, either one movie would have succeeded way above expectations, or both wouldn't have like really very long legs within the cinemas, I feel like. And speaking about the cinemas of their legs, uh, interesting thing about the box office is mm. that the opening weekend in the United States and Canada, this movie grossed 166 million, which wow. is pretty impressive. Do you know why? Yeah. Tell us, Chris. Well, it is the eighth biggest opening of all time. Okay. Uh, it actually even beats uh, The Dark Knight Rises, which had 160.9 million, mm. which was the film done by Christopher Nolan. And the film had a worldwide opening of, guess this, $422.5 million, which stands as the second biggest for Warner Brothers and the fifth biggest of all time at its release. And it would go on to reach $873.6 million at the box office overall. So... As you can tell, it kind of lost some steam right after it released. Yeah, the uh, funny thing is, the second weekend that this movie was on, okay, so you got the first weekend, very, very big, well, bam, like, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Batman, Superman, woohoo! Woo Everyone's really excited. Uh, second weekend, not many people excited, because this received a historic box office drop with an 812 percent decline on Friday, despite not really facing any big competition. So people were just like, yeah. I think people weren't really impressed. So the studio had big hopes for this movie. They oh, spent uh, yes. $300 million in budget-wise, promoting it mm -hmm. into the CGI and everything just going in to make this the best movie it could be. And then, yeah. as we're going to get into, it... It didn't quite beat the expectations. Yeah, no, this movie had very, very super ridiculous high expectations. It honestly could have lived up to the expectations. I'm probably a little bit less critical now, just because I've watched this movie so many times that I've actually grown to really like it. Because there's two important things that everyone like hates about this movie. I mean, I guess we'll, we'll say a little bit here. One, the Martha scene, and two, Batman killing people. People hate those two scenes. Yeah, even though there's a big part of comic book history where he just flat out... <laughs> yes, there's also awesome. a big part of movie history, which is basically every Batman film that he's ever been in, where he killed someone. Yeah. Except one certain movie. Yeah. You know yeah. what movie that was? If I'm not mistaken. It's actually a pretty... Not really recent. The one with the Joker? No. Which one? Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Oh, he wow. rarely kills anyone, if I'm not mistaken. There's not much killing. Well, it's like a, you know... Welcome to the new Ice Age! We had so many puns in that movie. There's no death allowed. We just died from random humor. Puns. I, that's great. Death um, by pun. <laughs> and also, if I'm not mistaken, the 1960s version of Batman. I think. Oh, yeah, they just all turned to sand. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> So good. It's but it's great. Uh, it's so campy, but it's amazing. Part of the reason why most people believe that this movie was a flop. There's so much story you skipped out on. Why do I care about Batman? Okay, let's yeah. throw this story in there. Okay, Wonder Woman's in here. Okay, let's have a random flashback to Cyborg and the Flash and yeah, and that's yeah. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why you could have made it a little bit shorter. I mean, granted, you didn't have to go the Marvel route. Okay, you didn't. Um, they just chose to kind of go a weird route. Jesse Eisenberg's portrayal of Lex Luthor, it just he's very manic. He's just very all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's very Jokerish. It's very Jim Carrey playing the Riddler. Which he was also playing the Joker in 
in that scenario. But yeah. even though it was kind of playing more of the 1960s version of the Raven. Very Man. campy. Very, very campy. So it just doesn't work in, 20, in the 20 teens and the 2021. You know, there are people like... Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Uh, who's, Jeff Bezos. He's very eccentric. And Jeff Bezos. And the thing is, uh, actually, Je Zack Snyder does have watch alongs that you can actually watch along. It's basically the only thing that you're going to get close to a director's commentary because on none of these films do they ha have a director's commentary, which is very upsetting. Yes. Because I at least want to hear it just from either Hans Zimmer, because that would be really cool, a musical commentary of, oh, yeah, with this scene, I uh, decided to do this. Or, uh, this or is why it's building here, because we're getting to this part here. Yes, yeah, it would be really cool. Um, or at least uh, David S. Goyer, I guess, for some reasons. Or, I don't know, everyone's favorite writer, Chris Turrio, which... Who directed one of Chris's favorite movies of all time. Chris cannot shut up about this movie. He just loves The Last Jedi. No, it's not the last Jedi that he did. He did the Rise of Skywalker. Honestly, I know they're probably not going to do this for the Flashpoint movie, but you know, in the Flashpoint comic books, uh, guess what? His parents don't die. Bruce dies. It's kind of great. Yeah, and Martha ends up as the Joker. And Thomas Wayne ends up as Batman. And it's honestly, it's very, very disappointing that they're not going to do that Flashpoint with Thomas Wayne. Because guess, guess who Thomas Wayne is play, plays as in this movie? Jesse. Tell me, Chris. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Mm. Man, he played, if you guys ever seen him, The Watchman, the comedian, he was great in that. He was amazing. I mean, he's only shown there in a the few scenes, but the scenes that he is shown in, he's it's gold. gold. It was gold. It was amazing. It was basically, it was some of the best. Mm. I was like, I love this so much. Ah, <laughs> I just want to just, I want more Jeffrey Dean Morgan on the screen. He was great. I loved it. Um, I loved him as a comedian. Uh, I mean, he also has the Walking um, Dead fame, you know, mm. very, very true, true. Yeah. huge famous right there. Uh, he's just all around a really good actor. Uh, you have them Warner Brothers doing Warner Brothers. This is the best score of all superhero movies, especially within the DCEU. It's just so, so amazing. There's not really a bad song off this album. I love any time that Henry Cavill is on the screen. Henry Cavill, without a doubt, as little as he's shown in this movie, he steals so many scenes, okay? That's one thing about the movie. It, you get a lot of... And it's another problem with introducing so many new characters. You're trying to show so much Batman so you can introduce him and get all the anger out. But showing, you're not showing enough of the S. Yes. You're not showing enough Superman or Clark Kent. This yeah, time. it's... And you're showing a lot of Lex Luthor. Batman has just had enough of fighting crime over the years. Yes, this is a very weathered Batman. And a lot of people's hatred for this Batman is that he kills. And Jesse, you know, what are your thoughts? Because you're one of the people who, um, you're kind of like, you help the audience, you know, get to see of why people don't like the killing, Bat like Batman killing. There's another instance that I saw of Batman killing, where it's just like, I didn't mind it as much whenever I was seeing the movie. It was kind of weird, but it's just like, wait, this is Zack Snyder, so I get it. But yeah, you explain to me whenever you saw Batman kill. So the first time I saw this, I was like, holy crap, these fight sequences are intense. I'm not used to seeing Batman just ready to kick some butt and possibly kill somebody and shoot someone and even brand them. Yeah. That was pretty brutal to see him use a bat brand on someone. You see that scar him and set him to where this criminal will possibly be killed in jail because he's been marked as a Batman's mark. And Batman is basically Judge, Jury, and Executioners. And this one criminal is just begging, like, please don't put me in general lockup. Please, because I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. And within a couple minutes, he's... <laughs> Yeah, he's stabbed to death. Shoot, it's very death. different to see that mindset in Batman. It's jarring if you're used to the Adam West or the cartoon Super Friends version of Batman, and yeah. if you haven't seen The Dark Knight Rises or B Dark Knight Returns. Yes, which, whenever I was watching this movie, and I know Zack Snyder's love for this certain writer, is a comic book artist by the name of Frank Miller, and he did a weathered Batman portrayal, The Dark Knight Returns. And this Batman is just brutal, okay? He doesn't kill as much, but, you know, he's he's probably killed a few people. I watched the movie version of this. I didn't really read the comic version, um, just because I heard something with the comic version, which is like, yeah, some of the art style is kind of in. But the movie is fantastic. It's cut up into two parts. I love it. It's great. And it just shows you of how brutal 
Batman is a lot of Batman stories. He's either in the early twenties or late twenties. It's in, it's insane, you know. He's starting off within you know within our age range, Jesse. Yeah, it's and he's it's, doing things that we can't even imagine. <laughs> exactly, and then you know whenever you've been doing something for like twenty plus years, you just kind of get tired of it. You yeah. just kind of you know you've seen the same type of thing. I, I can't speak from this from personal experience, but maybe with a lot of police officers when they have actually seen a lot of stuff. I know from war veterans, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. They've seen a lot of stuff for so long that you just get numb to it and that you and just... PTSD just kind of exactly. takes over. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who work EMS jobs, yeah, emergency responders. Yeah, One of my friends tells me he sometimes wakes up in night terror just screaming remembering some stuff he's seen. Yeah, and but then you get that added on to you know doing this crime fighting thing. Well, one at like probably not the best hours to do this. Um, <laughs> right, um, he doesn't choose his own hours; they're chosen for him. Exactly. You know, wind up penguins and uh, yeah. you know jokes and little riddles that you got to figure out at three a.m. in the morning. And then like, your body just getting battered. I mean, granted, you also have the great Jeremy Irons that is also being very sarcastic. And yes. <laughs> I love Jeremy Irons. The best, Al I said it earlier, the best Alfred oh, take really. there, there is. Like, I love the Christopher Nolan Alfred, but this Alfred just being sarcastic. It's just like, okay, boss. Yeah, I've been taking care of you since you were a little kid, you dope. I've seen the Ultimate Edition so many times, and one, the Ultimate Edition is way too long. It's just Way too long. There's some instances where it's just like, okay, you're just dragging this out forever. You can way cut this down. But then I watched the theatrical version, and it's just like, okay, this is just way sped up. It's just way just rushed, 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 rushed. Rush. Exactly. Know? And guys, are we telling it right? Are we or are we dead wrong? Do you prefer one or the other? Do you prefer the three hours? Do you prefer the two and a half hours? Are we wrong? At PXH Culture on your social medias. We have to talk about the title for this film, Batman v Superman. I know we probably should do it a little bit earlier, which if you guys are just wondering, well, why is it not called Batman vs. Superman? Well, the thing is, this film takes place a lot in a courthouse. In the yes. courts, guess what? Whenever you're, you know, going up against someone in like a legal battle, okay? It's, yeah, it's not going to be some kind of nerdy versus yeah. or... In a video game, you know, Mario versus Luigi, Bowser versus Mario. Snyder said that he wanted to have the V in the title instead of versus as a way to keep it from being a straight versus movie, even in the most subtle way. Yeah, it was uh, more of a plantant and defendant in the court cases. You know, Batman going against Superman, just being like, he is awful. And it kind of explains within some of the lines where it says, that, you know, if we have one percent chance of evilness, or you know, if he has a, they have to take it as an absolute certainty, and it kind of makes sense within the way that the law works. Okay, the jury of the law, and then you know, you have Superman in court, you know, having to defend have, himself. Yeah, have the news cycle of of all of this. You know, whenever you know you're watching a court case, you have all this evidence building against the Man of Steel. Yeah, and then it's kind of up for us to decide. You can see where it's trying to go at, but it needs to be edited just just slightly. slightly. Save Martha! Why'd you say that name? Yes, the scene that you guys have been waiting for, building suspense, just like last week with Zod dying, okay? You yes. gotta build suspense to everything, Jesse. You yes, you gotta have them just kind of waiting, waiting. Yeah. And they're like, they're all waiting like, are they ever going to talk about it? Are yeah. they going to discuss it? Is Chris just going to just not talk about it? Is Jesse just so dense that they're not going to talk about the scene? We could. We could. <laughs> but now we remembered to talk about what Jesse just said. Sweet Martha. <laughs> All right. And here's me being a little devil's advocate for this scene. Everybody okay. hates it. And we're going to just say what everybody was thinking in the theatrical version, like, Hey, your mom's name's Martha. My name's, my mom's name was Martha. Let's be friends. The stepbrother situation. Yes. I'm going to be <laughs> on the other side. I'm going to say that that scene is actually really good. 
because it kind of makes sense within the context of the film. I was one of those people that absolutely hated it in the theatrical cut. I I was I this, was this I is, was completely anti this movie with this scene this, originally before exactly. I saw the ultimate edition. Go ahead. Well, the thing about this scene is that. The more that you watch it, the more you start to understand it, okay? You start to see, it's like, okay, I get it now. One of the important scenes, literally just minutes before this, mm. is Batman saying, I bet your parents told you are special, that you're put here for a reason, that you mean something, but I was taught something different, as my parents died in the gutter for no reason. And that, you get to see... That this guy, you could say his mother without a doubt, and guess what? He doesn't care. Yep, yep. his parents just died. Okay? Died in the street by a common criminal. Yeah. Um, and you as know, far as we know at this point, uh, uh, Batman's story of his art. Yeah. He just they were killed by a common criminal for no meaning whatsoever, no purpose. They just died in front of their son. Within the beginning, you have the pearl actually drop because the pearl rocks um, from the sewer all the way down and then Bruce actually fell and then finally the pearl dropped because so it's just like the Bruce fell way harder than his parents did whenever they died and yes. it's one breathtaking and then you have the back lift of up so and like, you have Thomas Wayne's dying words of Arthur and within this Zack Snyder has actually said that's why I said Watch the watch along, and he explains it. Or just look up Batman, the Superman reaction, Zack Snyder, and it makes sense. Uh, he literally says within this scene is basically understanding that Bruce has come to this realization is that he's becoming something that he did not want to become. He said the one absolute certainty just because he wanted to make sure that the people were safe, no matter yes. what the cost was. The, the thing is, he was becoming what he despised. He was becoming the monster that he didn't want to be. The visual of the bat coming out of Martha's grave, okay? Yes, and he, yes. was, he was letting that consume him for what it was. important scene in this film. Because it was coming out of Martha's grave. Not Thomas's grave, okay? Or both of their graves. It was just coming out of Martha's grave. So it's because his death of his mother and kind of his family, okay? Cause Big foreshadowing of them. And he wasn't going to be able to see it until it was too late. Mm -hmm. Even as, and it's you pointed out, Chris, that Bruce was still going to make the kill on strike. Even whenever he said Martha, he didn't stop at Martha. What made him stop was Lois Lane. Lois Lane was the key, okay? It's so also yes. a little bit foreshadowing right here. Um, From earlier in the film, of yeah. when the Flash said, she's the key, Lo save Lois. Yeah, Lois is the key. And then you get it. You get it kind of also here, but then you also get it within Snyder Cut, Trill yeah, yeah. Uh, Justice League, because it's all foreshadowing in some instances. And it's all kind of like makes sense. So this is intertwining with this, and this is intertwining with this, and the saying that she was my world, that's, a, that's another type of thing. It's, yep. But the key right here was Lois Lane saying, that's his mother. That's his mother's name. That's his, his mother. mother's name. And what gets Bruce to really back to reality was seeing Lois there, a human, one, a human, and then two, Knowing that there's, that there's potential for love. There's a saving grace yeah. to Superman. It is a weird scene, without a doubt. But you get to see Batman was about to become the thing that he did not want to become. Mm. And that's the important part of this. Is realizing, no matter how you get there, is that there's always that important piece. Yes. What I, will break I, you? I, and I think a realization that I just had, even, is that he was... Becoming the Joker. He was becoming his worst villain. He was about to kill someone's most loved person. Yeah, oh yeah, that's actually nice. And that's another good uh, symbolism right there. You know, he's about to kill like that person who's like Robin. Even though he had killed people throughout the movie. No, they, you know, he, the flesh wounds. they were they were meaningless. But he was about to kill someone that was meaningful to someone else. Again, it's back Another to human. 
It's back to he's been doing this for so long, so he's just he's kind of done with it. Exactly. Right? And then this was the point where he was back into reality. Yes, Lois has caused him to kind of see and to breathe again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To just say, wow. It, it's also like whenever Superman kind of did the snap neck. So mm-hmm. I said these two scenes are very important. They're very critical like very controversial in this sense why is this included and then it isn't until the aftermath that Mm. you see what has happened okay batman right here this was his turning point this was his arc okay this was him not becoming the monster that he was okay because then afterwards you get to see the hope okay you get to see a little bit better within justice league which I do like that Batman because he does provide a little bit of a hope within this and is because what this right here, the scene provided, and also Martha is not going to die tonight, okay? And he literally said, Martha is not going to die tonight, okay? He could have said, like, your mother is not going to die tonight, but I, this is a little bit powerful with Martha. I make you this promise. Yeah, I make you this promise. And that's, that's nice. You also get to see, I think, the completion of Clark's arc of, like you said, when he killed Zod, for him, he got to see what he wanted Zod to do. Mm-hmm. He wanted Zod to say, in some sense of the matter, of Zod to see the error of his ways. When I saw the theatrical cut, I hated it. Hated it. But as I've slowly even began, and even the realization that I just shared with Chris just now, it's helped me understand the movie and to like it more yeah and uh, you see a lot of youtubers actually say this they have the same thing as you uh, and also kind of the same thing as me at first you don't like the movie it isn't until rewatches and rewatches that you start to understand oh i get this movie now and you start to dive a little bit deeper okay and then you understand a little bit of the tragedy that is kind of within the movie, but Snyder's life with his daughter, which we'll definitely get to within the next. The Justice League. Let's actually hit with our final thoughts. And what do you give this movie, Jesse? So, very weirdly, I'm going to praise it up. Yeah, I think this is going to be another praise it up one. And you guys have even heard, you've heard of both of our journeys. You cannot, not, Praise it up. Yeah. With Batman v Superman, it's by far like one of my favorite movies. Um, it's definitely a, a, a Definitely, praise definitely. Up. Praise it up. And should a Christian watch this, Jesse? I believe so. Okay. Because you have so much symbolism. Symbolism? Jesus. Pointing to Jesus characters, messianic characters. Yes. And of how they would react within this world. And should they watch the, the theatrical cut or the Ultimate Edition if they're a Christian? I know the Ultimate Edition. It is the kind of Ultimate rated Edition. R. The Ultimate Edition is definitely rated R because there's a lot more GDs. It's R, but it's not like a hard R. It's just you know there's some things where it's like mm, okay, all right. But so if you're like worried about the children, then yeah, maybe don't let them see this. Yeah. But if, if you care for, about the overarching story. Yeah. If you're looking for a somewhat deep movie, it has honestly really good rewatchability. It really yes. is. Because there's a lot of different details within it that makes it rewatchable. Rather than with Man of Steel that doesn't have a, that much details in it. Unless you just try to look for it. <laughs> right. Uh, this one, you know, you have different stuff. You have the character of the news, so that's 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 a nice thing. You know, you have all this other stuff. You know, you it's always switching new scene where it's you can pick up something new. So there's that.
But with that, if you guys would leave a like onto this video and also comment down below what you guys thought about this review and all this other stuff, all this video. I know it's long, but hey, it's pretty good. Remember to check out the full version down on the uh, link down below. Uh, it probably should be, it's probably gonna be the last one or maybe the first one, I don't really know. Who knows, depends on how I am feeling and all that type of stuff. Maybe to make you guys hit all those other links so, you know, you guys can get the at PXH culture stuff, the Facebook, the Instagram, and also check out the Teespring store and all that other fun stuff. Let me know actually what you guys thought. And of course, if you're new here or a return visitor and you haven't yet to hit that subscribe button, then go ahead, hit it right now. It really, really obviously helps out this channel. Hit that notify bell, of course be notified for a new video that gets released. Nothing else. Go off shoes and change the culture. Boom. Bye.